Yes, I'm Matt Bushy. Um, we're going to talk about web performance. How do we make our web applications faster? I have no memes, and I had to turn these slides in on Monday, so I couldn't add any. So I apologize. <laughs> so first, why should I care about web performance? Most of my users use a fast internet connection. Well, that's not true. Throughout the world, 71% of users have 2G or 3G speeds. And most of these people are using terrible Android devices, roughly equivalent of five-year-old Android devices. So what makes up a web page? HTML, obviously, JavaScript, CSS, images, fonts, videos. What one of those things is needed for a web page to work? Only HTML. So over the past 10 years, we have increased the weight of everything by 314%. And that includes, I mean, the, everything has increased by 300% except HTML, which actually has gone down in size in the past 10 years. So the content our users actually care about, we're sending less to them. So the way we can audit this is by using a tool called Google Lighthouse. So this is built into Chrome. Open your dev tools, go to the audits tab. It'll give you four scores and a PWA score. We're going to focus mostly on the performance score here, which was a 60. This was for, everything is for the Portland DevOps Day site. So 73 of 97 requests are images. So that's 2.4 out of 2.8 megabytes. So the first thing we can do is defer on off-screen images. So when you initially load the website, there are no images that load, except for in the top left, there's that brain. These other, um, the social icons come from a library. So we can use something called Intersection Observer. Until a user has scrolled down on the page, we don't load any of the images. But now, Chrome has introduced an even better way, other than Intersection Observer, which is the loading equals lazy attribute on images. So this is just rolled out like two weeks ago supported it in 18% of browsers right now. But as with most HTML things, if it's an attribute your browser doesn't know about, there's no performance penalty. You just don't use it. Um, so we can also resize images and optimize the images. So I took the four largest images, resized them to the maximum width that we need, and then optimized those using tiny PNG. So from those four images, we went from 1,100 KB down to 9 KB. Another um, recommendation is use next-gen image formats. So I converted the PNGs to WebP, which actually slightly increased the size, converted them to SVG, and it decreased the size. So use your head, do what makes sense, don't increase the image size if you don't have to. So the cool thing is not all browsers support WebP. You can use the picture tag, and it will serve the browser a WebP image or a PNG, or if it doesn't support even the picture tag, it'll serve up this JPEG image. And alternatively, you can also add media tags. So if a user has a high definition screen, we can load a high def image. And this also gives the browser some liberty to determine how your internet speed is using this tag. So if your internet speed is slow, it may load the lowest quality image based on what you've set in the picture tag. If you're using JavaScript, make sure you concatenate, uglify, obfuscate, minify, should be one file, everything should be, so it's not, not readable. The end user doesn't care, they're never gonna have to read it. Try to eliminate jQuery. Uh, we had one site where we were using jQuery. It was literally only used for the show and hide button on mobile. So obviously overkill, not needed at all. If you're using Lodash or any other library, can you use just a subset of those libraries? CSS, if you're using Bootstrap, can you remove a lot of the Bootstrap classes that you're not using? Or can you try using Flexbox or CSS Grid or something that is much more lightweight? Enable compression and caching. So gzip and Brotly are supported in almost every browser. Um, basically, it just minifies the file like you would gzip or 7-zip or zip any sort of file. And that's how it's sent to the end user. And then it's unzipped on the fly. Accessibility. Make sure you have a language tag attribute. And you have alt tags for everything. So on the DevOps Days site, there were alt tags for everything. I removed them. And you can use a simple CSS that will turn all the images black and white um, if they don't have an alt tag. So it's something in dev you would be able to tell where you're missing alt tags. Build a progressive web app. So this can be done using familiar web technologies. In Chrome, because the service worker files are byte cache, there's no parse compile time. So it'd be super fast. Other wins, review widgets. So if you have tweets embedded, that takes up a lot of CSS and JavaScript. Can you use that intersection observer to delay that? Make sure you're using SSL, HTTP2, a CDN, potentially inline critical CDS. And finally, again, why should I care? Uh, the most, imp most, important, most important thing is people don't want to use your app 
they want to be done using your app, so respect their time.